Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pokemon challenge. Today we'll find out if I can beat Pokemon Gold with no new moves. This idea came from me watching a bunch of my dry bird videos, so if you haven't already watched his version of this challenge, I suggest watching it after this video. But on to the rules. Rule 1. When we catch or acquire a new Pokemon, we can only use the moveset it came with. For example, if we catch a level 4 Geodude, then we can only use Tackle and nothing else. Now we can't stop the Pokemon from learning new moves, but we just won't use them. Rule 2. I can teach Pokemon HM moves such as Cut and Surf to progress in the game, but I can't use those moves in battle. And Rule 3. I won't be using any items in battle to add to the difficulty. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments what challenge I should do next and what team you would use for this challenge. We begin by picking our starter. Now this choice doesn't matter as we'll only be able to use Tackle or Scratch respectively, but I ended up picking Totodile as it has the highest attack stat out of all the starters. And the other two have Tackle which isn't 100% accurate while Scratch is while doing the same damage, so it was pretty clear that Toto Totodile was the pick. We name it Tobrodial and after meeting up with Mr. Pokemon, beating up and snitching on a thief, we get given Pokeballs and the run finally starts. We quickly catch a Spearow that can only use Peck and Growl. We easily clear our Bellsprout Tower and can take on Faulkner. But before we do, there's a very important Pokemon we have to catch, and that's Bellsprout. In Violet City, there is an NPC trade where they'll give you an Onyx for a Bellsprout, but we need to grind Bellsprout up to level 14 first. This is important because we want Onyx to have Rock Throw, which it doesn't learn until level 14. And the traded Pokemon will be the same level as the Pokemon you offered. So once we get it to level 14, it's time to trade and now Faulkner will be easy. Right? Right? So yeah, it turns out Obedience is level 10 when you don't have a badge, so this makes things a lot harder. Not to mention, Pidgey is spamming Mudslap, which lowers our accuracy, and Rock Throw is already a 90% accurate move. So we don't even hit Pidgey once with an attacking move. We send in Spearbow to reset our accuracy and to take out the Pidgey. We send Rocky back in, who actually hits a Rock Throw versus Pidgeotto, but it does a one-shot but it does bring it low enough for us to revenge kill, and with that, we get our first badge. And now Rocky will listen to us. Or, so I thought. After clearing out Slowpoke well, it's Bugsy time. Now, I was under the impression that any Pokemon level 20 or under would obey me after the first badge, but uh, apparently not, as Onyx refuses to fight properly. Finally, we take out Metapod after a very long time, and now it's time for his ace, Scyther. And I kid you not, we don't hit a single Rock Throw. Either Rocky disobeys me, or Rock Throw misses, and Scyther continues to stack Fury Cutter and sweep our team. Now just in case you didn't know, this is how Fury Cutter works. Fury Cutter starts off with a base power of 10, but every time it hits successfully, its power will double, up to a maximum power of 160. If Fury Cutter misses, the user is switched out, or the player uses an item, the, the power will reset to normal. Thanks Bulbapedia for that. But yeah, needless to say, Scyther sweeps our team with a 106 paced Fury Cutter and we lose our first Bugsy attempt. But we come back, now that Rocky is out of his phase, we beat Bugsy with a couple of rock throws and get our second badge. Now Rocky will actually listen to us. Now normally I would skip the second rival fight, but I got so unlucky I couldn't help but add it in. Now Ghastly was easy, two specs from Spearow and it was down. Now for Zubat, I switched into Totodile, as Zubat goes for Sonic and we go for Scratch. And this will be the only move we hit with Totodile in this battle, as Zubat gets a crit flinch on Bite, followed up by another two flinches to which Totodile hits himself, flinches again, and then finally ends his own pain himself by hitting himself one last time. Rocky and Spiro easily finish the battle afterwards, but I was fuming. But to add to my suffering, it's Whitney time, and there is an in-game trade you can do in Goldenrod Mart where you can trade Drowsy for Machop, and I thought it was Abra. And do you know how annoying Abra is to catch? Not only is it hard to find, it will first turn teleport every time, so if you don't catch it in the first throw, you lose it. So after 10 minutes, I finally catch an Abra, but it's level 10. I need it to be level 14, so Machop has Karate Chop. 
So I finally grind it to level 14, only to find out I needed a drowsy this whole time, which is super common and comes and comes level 14 straight away. <sighs> anyway, we have the Machop now with the access to low kick, Leer, Focus Energy, and Karate Chop. With Machop, this battle is pretty easy, even if Clefairy Encore stalls us for a while, but Rocky comes in and takes it out before no, before Clefairy gets a Parish Song off, meaning Rocky can stay in for two more turns. But in those two turns, we get a Screech off, letting Machop two-shot Mill Tank easily with Karate Chop, and with that, we have our third badge. And now it's time to take on the gym leader that I fear most, Morty. Now, Morty is tricky. The reason why Morty is so difficult is because most starting moves are normal. In fact, the only Pokemon who can hit him are Spearbro who evolved into Furo on the way and Pseudo Wudo who we also caught on the way, and Rocky. But the problem is, Pseudo Wudo and Rocky have pretty bad special defense and card outspeed Gengar. So that really just leaves it to Furo, who can't be affected by any of his ghost moves, but it can be affected by Curse. So. On our first run, we do unfortunately lose. We get rid of his Ghastly and Haunters easily, but his Gengar lands a few Hypnosis with Dream Eater spam and it's just unfortunate. But on our second attempt, we do get super lucky. We get rid of his Ghastly and Haunter easily, and then in comes our main problem, Gengar. Now, again, if Firo goes down, it's all over. So I send in Rocky and Pseudo Wudo to try and get some chip damage, but they instantly die. So it's all up to Spiro, who for some reason is unaffected by Hypnosis and we get several free pecks off and finally take him out with a crit and that's our fourth badge acquired. On the way to Chuck we catch a Tentacruel but it has an awful moveset so I instantly replace it with Mantine. Now on to Chuck himself who was honestly a joke as Furo easily beats his team with a couple of pecks and one Karate Chop from a chop to finish off his Polyrath. And with that easy battle out of the way, it's Jasmine time, who is probably the hardest gym leader. Now, I thought this would be easy with Machop, but we get bodied on our first attempt. So I decide it's time to train up Machop and Mantine, up to level probably around 30. While grinding, Machop evolves into Machoke, and now at level 30, Jasmine is a lot easier. One Karate Chop takes out Magnemite, and I try my luck with Focus Energy crits, but get nothing. Steelix is low enough now though that, Man that Mantine can easily take it out with Bubble Beam. Unfortunately, Man Magnemite lives Bubble Beam and one shots Mantine, leaving it up to Rocky, who after a few rock throws, finishes off Jasmine. Now it's time for my least favorite part of the game, all the rocket shenanigans. We first catch the Red Gyarados, who will be a main player on our team for the rest of the run doing most of the damage and really carrying, as its starting set's not too bad. It has Leer, that lowers defense by stage one, Thrash, which is a really strong move, but it locks itself in and then confuses itself once it's done, Dragon Rage, which only does 40 damage, and Bite, which can flinch and is a dark type move in this game. So it's gonna be super easy for those ghost types who you've been having issues with. We easily clear out the rocket base with Thrash Spam and proceed to body price easily with Machoke and Mantine, who both have super effective moves against his team. And once again, Team Rocket is an easy sweep in the radio tower, and now we can actually move on to Claire, the 8th gym leader. On the way to the 8th gym though, we do catch ourselves a Swinob for the Elite Four. Now honestly, I was pretty scared for this fight. Our team's pretty weak at the moment, as I haven't done any grinding. The only grinding we have is on Gyarados, as he took out all the Rocket members. But this was easier than I ended up thinking it would be, but that's mainly due to Dragonair missing its first Thunder Wave and us taking it out in two thrashes. If that Thunder Wave hit, we were in trouble. We switch into Muscle for the second Dragonair and take it out with a couple of Karate Chops. I'm mainly just making sure that Gyarados doesn't get paralyzed. The third Dragonair, however, proves to be kind of annoying. Since I don't want Gyarados to get paralyzed and the rest of my team is pretty weak, it does take out a lot of us. Luckily, Rocky was able to get a Screech off and this lowers its defense by two. And this allows Spearbro and Gyarados to take it out no problem. Kindra, however, is a bit tankier than the rest of our Pokemon. I decided that I would just go for Thrash and see how it goes. I hit Kingdra with a couple of flashes, but it brings it into a range for a potion. But eventually it does fall down and we have the eighth gym badge. 
We run into our rival in Victory Road, but Gyarados makes a quick work of him, basically sweeping him, so there isn't too much to talk about. Now, our team is looking really weak, so we need to make some changes. We add Swinob to the team, and in Victory Road we catch ourselves a Golbat and a Graveler. Since they are in Victory Road, they're pretty high level and should have decent movesets. So with these changes, let's look at the team. We have Gyarados with Thrash, Dragon Rage, Bite, Leer. We have Bronub with Powder Snow Tackle. Muscle with Karate Chop, Leer, Focus Energy, and Low Kick. Graveler with Magnitude, Rock Throw, Harden, and Self Destruct. Colbat with Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Supersonic, and Bite. And then lastly, Spiro with Peck and Growl. So let's take on the Elite Four. Will is a decently easy battle. Gyarados ends his Zatu quickly in two bites while only losing 50 HP to a Psychic. He brings in his Jinx as we switch into Graveler, thinking that a Rock Throw would do decent damage, but we get one shot by Jinx's Ice Punch, so yeah, that kind of put a halt to that plan. I switch back into Gyarados, and silly me, I go for three bites instead of a Thrash, which would probably either have been a one shot or a two shot since Jinx doesn't have the best defenses. He brings in Slowbro as I switch into Golbat, and we whittle him down with Confusion and Flinch Hacks. And eventually we finish him off with two Bite Flinches in a row. And without that luck, Golbat would have gone down to two Psychics, as his first Psychic only, only left us with 30 HP. I decided to stay in with Golbat and try my hack strategy again. We almost take out his Zatu with a crit, but we fall down to Psychic. He uses his Max Potion on Zatu, but Gyarados two shots it anyway leaving his last Pokemon Executor, who we chipped down with Furo, allowing Gyarados to finish it off with Thrash, giving us the win versus Will. Now it's time for Koga. Koga can be very annoying, as all of his Pokemon have a way to affect accuracy, so it's a really luck-based battle at times, and I am not at all lucky with accuracy in Pokemon. He starts off, we start off with Graveler, as he starts off with a Rainier Dose, who quickly goes for Double Team, as we switch into Golbat, so it's already not looking too good. We luckily though hit the wing attack and it one shots. He brings in Venomoth who more or less shares the same fate, going down in two wing attacks. He brings in Fortress which is probably the most annoying Pokemon on his team for me as it has a monstrous defense and a lot of these starting moves are very weak physical moves. And forgetting that it had Explosion, I tried to set up Leer and Dragon Rages to chip it down but it does eventually go for that explosion, taking down, taking down Gyarados, who's probably our hardest hitter of the team. I bring in Firo as he brings in Muck. I go for Growl as it lowers Muck's physical attack, and I didn't want Graveler to take any unnecessary damage, as with Gyarados gone, it's really our only answer for his Crobat later in the fight. I eventually do switch in Graveler once he takes down Firo, who after two magnitudes takes out the Muck. And for his final Pokemon, Crobat, it goes instantly for double team, which made me very nervous, but we luckily hit both rock throws in a row, which is pretty lucky for me as I miss rock throw normally. I wasn't too worried about Bruno as he is notorious for being the weak link of the Elite Four. I start with Graveler thinking he'll lead off with Onyx, but instead he leads with Hitmontop. He goes for Dig as I go for Self Destruct, giving him a free KO. And with multiple quick attacks, he also ends up taking out Firo due to its low level and with a crit. We bring in Golbat who easily finishes it off with a wing attack. He now brings in his Onyx as I switch into Machoke who swiftly ends it in two Karate Chops. He sends in Hitmonlee who is taken out by Golbat's wing attack as well and then Hitmonchan also shares the same fate. And that brings us to his ace Machamp who is a bit tankier than the Hitmon bros and lives a wing attack, retaliating with Rock Slide, which ends Golbat's terror. We send him a choke, but after a max potion, he's back to full. We get two Leers off, which was super greedy, as Crush Top actually two shots us. But it also allowed us with a crit to take up take out Machamp in one hit after he missed his second Cross Chop, giving us the win against Bruno. So yeah, pretty easy battle, uh, as I thought. But now it's time for probably the most annoying fight I've ever had. So Karen's first Pokemon is just as bad as Koga's whole team, at least when it comes to hacks. Her first Pokemon is Umbreon, who starts the fight with Confuse Ray, and we don't get a single attack off with Machoke, who hits itself in confusion, I kid you not, 
four times in a row. And once we finally snap out of that confusion, Machoke misses twice in a row due to sand attack. So, yeah, not a great way to start the battle. I send out Gyarados who breaks through the confusion and takes out Umbreon with its third thrash. She sends out Gengar who goes for curse first turn as we hit a pathetic magnitude 5 with Graveler, allowing Gengar to hold on with, with what looks like 1 or 2 HP. It then gets a crit para with Lick, but we break through and take it out with one more magnitude. She brings in a Bile Plume, which we chip with Furo's Peck and finish off with Gyarados' Dragon Rage. She then brings out Murkrow, which is probably one of my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon, which gives me mixed feelings when I one-shot it with Rock Throw. Her Houndoom takes out Graveler easily with a Crunch, and after a Leer, Gyarados one-shots it with Thrash, ending the miserable Karen battle. With Poliswine added to our team, it's time to take our revenge on Lance. The battle does start differently, as now that I know he leads a Gyarados, I decide to lead with Golbat, who after a crit, takes out Gyarados with three wing attacks. He sends in Dragonite again as we respond with Graveler, who still doesn't really like those twisters, but this time manages to take out the first Dragonite without going down. He sends in his second Dragonite as I try to go for self-destruct, but he outspeeds and hits his Blizzard. But now that I know this Dragonite doesn't have Thunder, we're free to bring in Gyarados who gets off two Thrashes while dodging two Thunder Waves. I get confused from Thrash, so I decide to switch out into Muscle, who tanks a Hyper Beam, but sadly barely misses the KO with Karate Chop and gets nailed by another Hyper Beam, ending his sad career. I bring in Poliswine to finish the job. He brings out Charizard afterwards. And well, I don't really want Poliswine taking no fire attack, so we switch into Gyarados as I go for Leer to try to make sure that we do get the two shot, but Looking at that damage, it looks like it would have been a two shot without the Leer anyway. So we finally take out the Charizard and now it's time for our true revenge as he brings in Aerodactyl, who goes down to three Powder Snows thanks to a freeze from Poliswine. And now that his Aerodactyl is out of the way, he brings in his third Dragonite who annihilates Poliswine with Fire Blast. We get a Confuse Ray off with Golbat and start testing out our Haxlock as he gets taken as Golbat gets taken out by a Hyper Beam. But since he has to recharge, we get a free thrash off, and after two more of those connect, we beat Lance. Now, this is normally when we would skip to Kanto and take on Red. But, unfortunately, <laughs> which is making me real angry when I think about it, my PC froze due to the Australian heat. So, normally I'll just reload from like where we saved, which should have been the Elite Four, and just continued on anyway. But for some reason, my computer had the biggest cry, and when I tried to reload the ROM, the save file was gone. My other Pokemon Gold run was there when I reloaded that ROM, but for some reason this one wasn't working. All my save states were gone as well, and I made a couple of them, so I don't know quite what happened. And as much as I want to go back to red i don't want to play through the whole game again because i really just don't have time at the moment so i do apologize that we didn't get to do red but uh yeah i hope you did enjoy this video anyway i am enjoying these challenges a lot i still think i need to get better at this commentating thing it's still difficult for me to do post i don't feel natural yet but hopefully they will continue to get better and i hope you stick around for more the next video should be can i beat pokemon fire red with only beedrill so i hope you'll stay around for that one Anyway guys, have a lovely day, happy new year, and see you all next time.